What is up guys and welcome back once again. My name is Jordan, also known as JMonster, and today I have for you another Medieval 2 Total War multiplayer battle. We are doing a 2 versus 1 siege. We have France and Russia on the same side this time, uh, taking this castle here from the Scottish. Now let's do a little bit of breakdown of the armies here, and then we'll get right into the battle. My ally, Antique Miner here, has brought three units of foresters, which are like a, they're like a cheap light shock infantry. Good for cannon fodder and things like that. He's got seven units of Bardi Shaxman, uh, three units of, where are they? Right there, uh, crossbow militia, two units of dismounted dwarf cavalry, which are skirmishers, and two units of Kazakhs, which are light skirmishers. In addition to that, he's got two units of Grand Bombard, very useful for pummeling walls, and he's got a Boyar Sons unit, which is like a medium skirmishing kind of cav, and that is where his general unit is located. And, oh, excuse me, sorry for this. <laughs> oh, allergy season, it is real. Uh, and over here we have my army, the French army, which consists of nine units of dismounted noble knights. Uh, as you can see, the um, unit scale is on very large, and that's going to cause us some problems because, damn, pathing in this is not great, especially in sieges with large units. Uh, but yes, nine units of noble knights. Dismounted Noble Knights, four units of French Archers, two units of Mounted Noble Knights, uh, one unit of General's Bodyguard, which is an early General's Bodyguard. In addition to that, I have three units of, uh, what do you call these? Flemish Pikemen. And as you can see, I have forgotten to bring any siege equipment. This is my first multiplayer battle in a very long time, and I done goofed. So all I have is my trebuchet right here, my one unit of trebuchet. And you're going to see the price that we pay later in this battle for not having brought that. But in the meantime, let's take a look at the Scottish army. He's got three units of, uh, what do you call these? Feudal Knights. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading the French subtitles and it's difficult to translate on the go. Uh, he's got two, three units, rather, of uh, Noble Highland Archers. Uh, where are they? He's got four units of Highland Pikes. In addition to that, he's got two trebuchets, five units of Spear Militia, and way, 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 way back here, downtown, he's got two units of Gallo Glass, which are heavy infantry, um, heavy shock infantry. They don't have a lot of defense, but damn, is their attack powerful. I think they've got like 19 attack and it's armor piercing. Uh, he's also got a late Scottish bodyguard here. Very powerful, very cool looking unit. And I think that's the entirety of his army. Let's go ahead and get this started. Uh, my ally here, I'm going to crank that up to 1.5. Well, apparently we can't do that. Well, I guess we can. So my ally here is being very aggressive, whereas I, as you can see over in the corner there, I'm taking a much more cautious approach. Uh, that's kind of a mistake on our part. We really should be attacking together in order to overwhelm uh, the defenders and stretch them really thin. And you're going to see just what happens when you don't attack with your allies in just a few moments here. Uh, his grand bombards are going to work on the walls, doing work, uh, and they're going to collapse them pretty quickly. Uh, his his archers, meanwhile, are rushing forward, uh, taking some pot shots here at these uh, at these feudal knights and these spear militia that he has behind the walls. Not going to hit too many people, not with indirect fire over the walls, especially this armored unit. They managed to kill one of them. Poor little bastard. Where is he? Yeah, he's right there. <laughs> the one guy to, to hit the dirt. Uh, and in the meantime, he's going to send up these... Uh, these field knights here in anticipation of the siege tower, but we're going to have some pathing issues with the siege tower, so that's going to play against both of the players in different, if strange, ways. So it looks like he's already got his uh, ram to the gate here, so we're going to go take a look at my army. I am s just trying to punch a hole in the wall right here. Uh, no, actually, it's right over here, I believe. Uh, I'm going to start taking some shots at this wall, uh, try and kill some... Oh, yeah, there, you go. there it goes. Try and kill uh, some of these guys on the wall. They're very powerful, very expensive units, so if we can take them down by collapsing the wall underneath them, that is a big victory for our forces. Um, not too sure where he's going with these pikes. He's going to keep them here for the most part. He's going to kind of try and man the towers and ward off any potential assaults. Uh, We're going to go around his forces, though, and uh, just punch some holes in the wall and skirt around the towers and skirt around his blockades. But in the meantime, just... Just the havoc going on here. This arrow is flying at each army, flying over the top of the walls, flying down from the walls. He's finally broken through here, um, but uh, we'll see what kind of dangers are going to be facing him. So it looks like this guy's just getting his uh, his militia spearmen into uh, into position here, and behind them he's bringing up yes his catapult, and this is going to be deadly. This is a 
brutal kill zone right here. And uh, because he's going to have some troubles in these towers getting over the walls, he's not going to be able to use more than one point of entry. So he's going to be trying to blow holes in the walls, but it doesn't commit totally. Uh, I think this actually stays at like 84% for a while. Uh, I could be wrong. Uh, I think there's a couple of holes that don't end up getting finished. Maybe he runs out of ammunition. But unfortunately, he's going to end up getting funneled into here, and we're going to see what happens. So he's going to send these guys ahead of everybody. Uh, Two-handed units, they're they are not bad on the charge, but unfortunately in vanilla, they have a two-handed bug, which means that they end up blocking more than they attack. So they get kind of stun-locked, so a whole bunch of two-handed infantry isn't necessarily the best thing you want to try and balance that out with a little bit of one-handed sword and board infantry. So uh, some dismounted boyar sons would be pretty nice right about now. Uh, but yeah, you can see here, I, I feel really bad for him when this kind of stuff happens. Like, this isn't his fault, and he's going to suffer pretty badly for it. Uh, he's just not able to get up the towers. The towers are kind of bugged. Uh, yeah, he's taking a lot of fire here, too, as well. He's trying to rush his units up, but they're just... It's just not happening. They're just trickling in very slowly, and they're not supposed to. Uh, so they're just getting surrounded by these spearmen and just absolutely butchered. Just look at this. There's so many of them dead on the ground. And uh, in addition to that, they're getting pummeled from these towers. So let's go take a look at the other side, see what our, what our army is doing. I think we've managed to almost punch a hole in one of these walls. Hmm. Oh, yes, there it is. We're still trying to do work on this wall. Uh, they seem to stand up pretty well, the trebuchets. Uh, I brought the trebuchet because I didn't intend it to be my only siege weapon, of course. Uh, and you can use them to do some pretty sneaky things over lower walls. So that's what I wanted to try and do. But uh, unfortunately, I, I messed up. I messed up pretty badly not bringing siege weapons to a siege. Uh, this looks like my, my ally here has made a little bit of a micro mistake. Oh, no, he's finally fixing that. He's got uh, these units here charging forward against these uh, these militia spears here. Hope. Ooh. Oh, that was close. Lucky. Very lucky, this unit here. That might have routed them. Uh, they are technically, I think, peasant units, so it is quite easy to route foresters. Oh, let's watch this charge here. That's freaking epic. Look at this. Oh, and they stopped just short. I don't know why. I think he, like, tried to stop and then turn around. I, I don't know. But now he's going in. Here's the charge. Boom. Not a very effective charge, unfortunately. Yeah, you can see the two-handed bug here in action. Uh, these guys have very low defense, and they're just mostly spending half their time blocking. It's not good. Not good for them at all. And in the meantime, he's got his... I wonder what happened to these guys here. I don't know how they died. They just kind of dropped dead. But he's got his catapult in position, and this is going to be very deadly. Because unfortunately, he's yeah, he's still suffering from this bug here. It's, it's really kind of ridiculous. And you just see the casualties starting to mount here from that tower over there. Just firing into the flanks of these units. Just killing them. Just fucking brutal. And uh, up here, like, he's really got nowhere to go. So this this was just, like, a really crappy mechanical error. Nothing uh, nothing wrong done wrong here on the part of my ally. Looks like he's going to... Oh yeah, it looks like he's managed to collapse most of this wall. He's killed a large number of these feudal knights. These feudal knights have just been sitting up here getting hammered. And uh, yeah, he's lost, I believe, well over half the unit. Almost half the unit. And uh, yeah, I don't think they've gotten a single kill yet. Uh, I think we're going to start punching a hole in the wall pretty soon. But in the meantime, there's a general charge here coming in through the gate. They're coming in to support this beleaguered unit of... Uh, of foresters who oh there it is now we've punched a hole in the wall now we're gonna start advancing pretty soon i think we've got one more hole to punch uh but yeah these these spearmen are holding well they're holding their own against this uh this charge here and he's gonna be trapped he's gonna be trapped between uh yeah this is very very good play on the part of the scottish player um he's holding up this entire russian blob with just one depleted unit of feudal knights giving his catapult time to fire into them it's a good decision on the part of the scottish player well done uh, but unfortunately, it's not going to turn out very well for him because random, random stuff right here. Boom, right into that unit of Feudal Knights, taking down five or six of them. They don't like it, and they are going to start to rout in the face of all of these enemies and taking that friendly fire. Uh, it was a good plan, though. I, kn I know what he was trying to do. Like, that, that was a smart decision. And it looks like the Russian units are still blobbed up here. So it still still may just work out quite well in the, in favor of this, uh, this catapult unit here. Watch this. Boom! Brutal. Just so many of them going down there, and that uh, that fire damage just wreaks havoc on their morale. Uh, and I see my allies having a bit of a, tr a struggle here, so I'm sending in two columns of my armored French knights. These are noble knights, very powerful. Um, quite a lot of them, so we're going to run into some uh, pathfinding issues in these very narrow city streets. 
Uh, but what, I, what I'm planning to do here is use this breach in the wall, uh, skirt around here, and take out this, uh, this catapult unit from the, from the side. Um, I believe, yeah, he's just about to move the spearman off because he doesn't see my noble knights coming in. Um, it's a, pretty hard to keep your head in all this fog. Uh, so he's not going to see them until the last minute. Until the last minute, rather. Uh, so my plan is to bring them around here, use one knight to charge into the back of these feudal knights, take down one of his very valuable workhorse units, uh, weaken his defending force significantly, uh, and keep an eye out for uh, all of these defenders here, because he's still got quite a lot of spears in reserve. Uh, very good deployment by our enemy here. Uh, and if possible, I'd like to try and get both of these catapults, but we'll see. We'll see how that works out. In the meantime, I'm just trying to get all my knights inside the castle walls. Uh, we are suffering a little bit of difficulty here. Uh, you can see the units are very stretched out. Uh, it's just, yeah, it's just kind of hard that way. Um, yeah, his poor, his poor Devor cavalry are just, they're turned around and now they're taking brutal, brutal damage from those towers up there. Still in control, uh, under the control of the Scottish player. Yeah, unfortunately, this wall wasn't damaged nearly enough, and I believe that his Grand Bombards are now out of ammunition, so that's all the holes he's going to be able to punch in this wall. Um, it looks like these guys are coming down to join the fray. He's brought in some flanking units here, so the Russian player is in big trouble. He is surrounded on two sides, and in the meantime, he's getting hammered by this, uh, by this catapult here. And this is all of his infantry. This is everything he's got. Uh, I don't think he has too many reserves outside the uh, outside the walls now. He's got some militia crossbows, and he's got horsemen, and some more crossbows. So yeah, this is all of his infantry. They're all in here. He's going all in. Balls deep in the Scottish player. And it doesn't look like it's going very well for him. This first unit, they're still holding, and victory is certain, even against all of these troops. This is why the two-handed bug is just not fun. Uh, it, makes two, it significantly reduces the effectiveness of two-handed units. It really sucks. Uh, but I don't think my my uh, my ally here knew that because otherwise this would be a very potent attacking force, especially against militia spears. Uh, so let's check. Let's take a look at our noble knights here. Looks like he's trying to follow me in with his uh, with his general. Uh, we're running into some pathfinding issues here, where I told them to uh, go straight down this way, and they decided they weren't going to. Uh, and he sees this attack here because we bungled our charge a little bit because pa silly pathfinding issues. You can see that here. And uh, this unit here is about to be cut off by a unit of spears. But we're just going to go for it. We're going to go hard and try and save as much of our allies' infantry as we possibly can. Help him out in any way that's in any way possible. Because he is seriously struggling against this unit of spears here. And, uh, and this catapult. So we managed to get... We do get cut off by two spear units. There's another one coming up the rear there. But we do manage to sneak a few French knights into this artillery crew. And they are just doing work. And just watch them die. Just so many of them. This unarmored crew does not have a chance against these heavily armored French knights. They are slaying these peasants without any mercy. Yeah, just watch them die. And it looks like he's trying to save his crew by running them away, but there's just there's no escape for them. So uh, I believe we actually destroy this crew, and it's just it's a total disaster for uh, for his troops here. Uh, but. Unfortunately, this entire unit of French Knights is going to be wiped out. It was a sacrifice we had to make in order to help our ally, uh, who's now bringing in all of his cavalry. He's bringing in everything he's got. Uh, he's, he's being pressed on, on many sides here, but I think there's at least two units of spearmen in there. Yeah, there's two units of militia spears. And uh, you've seen what one unit of militia spears was doing to his entire army so far, just well placed in that choke point. Uh, but now they are finally starting to thin out significantly. Uh, I think he's got some archers in here, and they're having some. They're taking a few pot shots at. Uh, oh, excuse me, at these uh, militia spears here, and also these ones in behind. Uh, so they have actually taken a fair amount of damage fighting off our uh, our noble knights. You can see quite a lot of spearmen are dead in there, uh, but unfortunately, it's not really a fair trade for uh, those valiant, heavily armored, very useful French knights. Uh, we did manage to keep one of our other units out of the slaughter. I believe they're hanging out over here. Uh, yeah, trying to run away from these pikemen. Looks like they managed to catch one of them. He's trying. He's doing a very good job at uh, at boxing us in. Uh, but he, I think he needs to be a little bit more aggressive with his troops. Uh, he needs to push these guys forward and really put on the pressure, and uh, and break this Russian player who is very vulnerable right now. So if he moved up his pikes here, my knights would be trapped. Everyone would be trapped. It would just be a total disaster. Uh, but I don't think he's going to to press his advantage here, and that's going to be very helpful for us. So I'm going to take these knights and I'm going to try and break this cordon here so that we have a place to flee to in the event that those pikes follow in behind us. Uh, and seeing how well my French knights did against, uh, while surrounded against these spear units, 
I'm just going to send them forward and we're going to try and overrun this position here. Uh, and it looks like defeat is certain for these poor, poor peasant spearmen here. Uh, and yeah, he's just he's just waiting there with his peasant pikemen, biding his time. I'm not sure what he's doing. Uh, I'm sure he has a plan, though. And uh, yeah, now we've blown a couple holes in this wall. Looks like my army is finally moving in to engage. I see that my ally is in a lot of trouble and that now is the time to act. So I'm going to start moving my French knights, or uh, my noble knights forward. And uh, along with all my with all my pikes and my uh, my trebuchet, we're going to move that inside the city eventually as well. Uh, but yeah, just moving in with all of my heavy infantry, a very potent heavy infantry force. I'm keeping my archers in reserve because I don't really have anything to use them on right now. Uh, but we're going to take this whole gate here, and he sees that I'm coming in, so he's going to get his uh, noble archers off there. And they've taken about 20 casualties from our uh, from our bombardment, from the bombardment from our trebuchet rather. And yep, they're gonna they're gonna flee. They're gonna flee, I believe, up to the second level, and he's gonna take up a defensive position. Uh, smart move on his part. Um, yeah, he's gonna take one of his catapults up there. I didn't see that, otherwise I would have run uh, some French knights at them, or at least tried to do something, uh, because this catapult is gonna cause us some serious problems later. And I would more than I would more than willingly sacrifice a unit of French knights if we could destroy it or at least cripple it. Uh, so yeah, he's moving all of his troops back up into here. He's still got fair amount of, uh, of soldiers left uh, but we'll see what he does with them oh yeah another breach in the wall I'm not sure where that came from probably from us uh, no that's from his grand bombards apparently they still had a little bit of extra ammunition so uh, what my ally did was pretty smart here um, he blew a hole in these troops here but then he run tries to run all of his uh, light cavalry through them and unfortunately they take bad bad casualties and they're gonna start to rout yeah you can see them starting to rout already and I don't think we're going to see anything else from them. I think they've mostly out of ammo anyways. Uh, but I've got my Noble Knights out here, and I'm going to uh, use this as an opportunity to try and get in behind these uh, these Scottish spearmen here. Uh, but there's not too many of them left, and they're fighting against, uh, I believe that's the Tsar's Guard. So that's No, that's the Devour Cavalry. Uh, but they're just taking terrible damage. They, uh, Yeah, these, these Militia Spears, they're not a very expensive unit, but damn, have they done a lot of damage in this battle. Uh, and I'm not really do. I think I kind of screwed up my micro here. I was probably too busy with my trying to get my army into uh, into the castle without any issues. Uh, so I'm not really doing anything with my with my French knights here when I really should be. I re I probably could have saved a lot of his Devore cavalry uh, as well as his Boyar sons. And he's just yeah, he's just running them over. He's just trying to to break this unit. And in the meantime, there's a big Scottish push here push here coming up the street. He's moved his uh, oh dear yeah he's moved his pikes forward. So he is tightening the noose. And, uh, yeah, there goes the Russian general. Uh, unfortunately, he tried to run them through those spears, and he got cut down. So that is going to send the Russian troops into a panic. Uh, I see what's going on here, so I'm going to move my French knights out of the way. Uh, I know that that's not a good place for them to be. And uh, if I can keep them away from his infantry and skirt around his, uh, his troops using my greater mobility, then I'm going to be able to do something uh, important with that cavalry later. So yeah, they're just chasing these Russian troops out of out of here. Most of them have been slaughtered. He does have a few troops left, and they are going to play a role later in the battle. But you guys will see what that's all about in uh, in just a few minutes. Yeah, he's he's moving all of his troops forward. He's done a pretty good job containing the Russian players so far, and part of that is my fault. I didn't move forward aggressively enough to uh, to counter him, but of course I didn't really have much of a choice because I didn't bring any siege weapons. So that is a big oops on my part. So it looks like I've moved into the city here. I've got a couple of units of Flemish pikemen setting up a little cordon here. Uh, I've moved some of my French arch archers into the uh, into the city, and I'm moving a large column of noble knights up here to uh, to challenge this big Scottish push as well. Uh, he's got quite a lot of troops here, and uh, he's still trying to deal with these uh, these boyar sons. It looks like most of them, yeah, they're going to get cut off and butchered by the spearmen. So really good play from the Scottish player here. Uh, very smart, good uh, good job cutting off escape routes and things like that and containing that Russian player. Uh, but unfortunately, he did take a fair amount of casualties uh, in the doing so, and I'm going to take advantage of that because I have a fresh army and a very powerful army with a lot of heavy infantry. So I'm going to push them forward, and they're going to start uh, putting a lot of pressure on these Highland Pikes. They are more than capable of uh, cutting this unit down. So I'm going to take this opportunity to use that unit of cab that I saved from the battle. I'm going to charge them into the backs of these pikes here. Deal as much damage as they possibly can. The Scottish player sees this, so he's coming in spears first, followed in, followed by heavy infantry and yet more spears. Uh, there's still some uh, militia crossbowmen outside the walls here shooting at his uh, 
at his towers. And most of these towers have been cleared of Scottish forces now, so they're no longer firing at the attackers. Uh, but he's, yeah, he's moving his victorious Scottish forces up here. They are all fairly depleted, though. So, and they are fighting a, f a very fresh and uh, very powerful French army. So I managed to get my troops out of there before he can really kill too many of them. He only managed to get that one horse. And he's going to he's going to do what he does best and set up a little cordon here and try and neutralize my cavalry. But as long as I leave them here as a threat, he can't commit all of his forces to this battle here. And I can just throw my units in piecemeal. I've got a number of French units in reserve. I think I've got at least three units of noble knights here. And this is where I start bringing out my archers because his troops are nice and blobbed up. And this is a prime target for these French archers. So I'm going to set them right up right down here at the end of the street. Move uh, my massive noble knights out of the way. Let the peasants through. And, uh, yeah, just one unit at a time. We're going to take some shots at these uh, these units here and try and support our forces. Uh, currently, the combat, or the battle, rather, is, uh, is evenly matched between the two forces. But our archers are going to turn that into our favor because these Scottish forces here do not have an answer to... Uh, to my archers because I have I have so I have so much more heavy infantry and I have many more archers than he does at least one more unit and uh, he's drawn most of them in uh, into the fortress here uh, which I think is a mistake on his part um, if he wanted to uh, if he wanted to bring his forces back in here he should have brought all of his forces and just used his uh, his spearmen here uh, his pikes to screen his his retreat back into the fortress and just save as many troops as he can but it at the moment, he's got four units engaged down here, and he just can't afford to lose the troops. Uh, and the other, pl the uh, Russian players coming in here, he's brought his crossbowmen inside, and they're firing into the backs of these Scottish uh, noble knights, or not noble knights, rather, feudal knights, and just cutting them down. They're armor-piercing, and they're firing into the back of them. This is not a good position. So the tables have turned a little bit here on the Scottish player. He is just taking it. He's just taking it from every angle. He's got French knights pushing it on one side. Crossbow, a hail of crossbow bolts cutting into his troops from the back. It's just not good. Uh, he should be taking this opportunity to try and run away. Uh, if he wanted to charge these two units here to keep my horsemen at bay to stop uh, me from harassing his retreat, he could absolutely do that. But uh, at the moment, he doesn't... Uh, I don't know, it doesn't seem like he knows what to do here. Oh yeah, and by the way, this is NP, NP Spartan. Uh, I forgot to, for, to give his name. And uh, yeah, so this is a bit of a mistake here from the Scottish player. And in the meantime, I'm bringing up some pikes to fight his pikes. And uh, and support my heavy infantry and just do kind of what he's doing. Um, he's charging some Kazakhs into the... Oh yeah! I guess these guys do have a part to play after all. Uh, and they're supporting his Grand Bombard crew. But they're just not going to do very much against armored... Uh, Armored Feudal Knights like this. Um, he's got two units of Feudal Knights in there, in fact. So that's two out of his three units. So that is a pretty big loss for him. Uh, even though the Russian player got butchered here uh, quite quite badly. That's 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 some slaughter. Um, but we're making the Scottish player pay for it with uh, about a quarter of his army, if not more, um, and one of his artillery pieces. Uh, he did manage to get his other catapult inside his uh, inside his base here. This is a good idea. Uh, and he's got a lot of troops in here. He's got these Gallo Glass, which are very powerful. And he's got a lot of pikes, so he's capable of holding us off for a while while his uh, while this catapult does work. And you'll see you'll see how that happens. He's got a pretty good defensive position here. But uh, the, yeah, this unit down here, they're just not having a good time. Looks like these pikemen have dropped their pikes, so that reduces their effectiveness quite a lot. Our swordsmen are getting in there, just slaughtering these lately armored Scottish troops. Uh, these guys are exhausted. I think we're exhausted. Is well, we're we're probably getting there. No, we're just tired. But these troops are exhausted, so we've got a, a fatigue advantage over him as well, which gives us a morale advantage. And plus, they are surrounded on each side. Uh, so it looks like he actually pulled off a unit of his spearmen here uh, to chase off some of these some of these troops that were flanking him. Uh, but these crossbows are just doing work. Look at them. There's still quite a lot of them left too. Uh, almost all of his crossbows are still intact. And in the meantime, we're uh, we're firing in his, into the into this blob of spearmen here with our with our French archers. Eh, we're not doing too too badly. Uh, French archers are okay, but not uh, not the best archers. But some crossbowmen might have been better. Uh, actually, upon reflection, I really should have taken some crossbowmen because uh, that's kind of what the French specialize in. But yeah, they're not doing too bad, and they're keeping the Scottish unit uh, pinned and scared. They don't know what to do. They can't break formation because they'll get shot. Uh, in the back with arrows. They can't go forward because our troops are pushing hard in here and they will just slaughter them. And they will also leave themselves open to an attack from uh, 
our French knights who are just sitting here patiently biding their time, getting regaining some fatigue. Uh, they're going to have a pretty important role to play a little later. Looks like he, the Russian player is just cycling his troops back in, being as much of a nuisance as he possibly can. Looks like he manages to rout these Scottish troops here, and that just spooks everyone else. So it starts a mass rout, and uh, yeah, it's, which is going to scare these troops right here. They're already wavering, and unfortunately for the Scottish player, we are going to push forward, and our archers firing into the backs of his troops. They're just all these riders are just going to scare these uh, these poor militia spearmen, and uh, they're going to start routing soon too. And all of them are routing right into the arms of my French knights. So there's going to be nothing more than a handful of survivors from this huge blob of Scottish troops here. He just could not afford to lose this. Uh, so in comes the Russian player with uh, the remains of his army, and I'm pushing forward with my French knights. And we're just we're just going to give the uh, the business to these uh, these spearmen here who are being rapidly surrounded. And in the meantime, the survivors are just being cut down by these vengeful but patient French knights. And then this very healthy unit here is going to route with about 40 troops in it. It's just not good, and they're going to route right into the arms of our French knights here. And there's going to be no survivors. Yep, there they go. And that is going to be the end for a very large contingent. Uh, many of them, his best heavy infantry wiped out in this battle down here in the lower levels uh, and that's gonna be that's gonna be the end for a large part of this battle just look at the slaughter here all oh, the poor Russian the poor Russian troops just so many people died uh, but that's gonna be the end for a little while oh the cannon the catapult took out some of his devour as well and uh, we're gonna be just drawing our troops in amassing for uh, the final attack on the Citadel and I'll show you guys what that's going to look like in just a moment. So here I am bringing more and more of my troops into the city. You can see that most of my army is now inside the city and we are trying to blow a hole in this wall over here. Trying to make ourselves another entry point so we don't have another repeat of what happened at the gate because I know he has another catapult inside these walls. Uh, if we can get two points of entry, because we still have some perfectly good siege equipment down by the walls, if we can get two points of entry then we can end this with the Scottish player very quickly. But unfortunately, we're not going to have the ammunition to punch through here, so we are going to have to push through that one gate. Uh, I've got all of my all of my troops into into the city already. I've got my general in here as well. Many different checkpoints, just trying to avoid any attacks that might come from that citadel on the hill. Uh, and also, my ally is bringing up his ram here. He's using his uh, unit of his militia crossbows to bring up this ram, so we can batter down the gate. Because if we if we can't get at least one entry into here. There's nothing we can do because both of our uh, both of our siege weapons have, are completely depleted in ammunition. Uh, I didn't bring any siege equipment because I'm an idiot, and uh, his siege towers down here are uh, basically unusable. You saw what happened to them. Yeah, just look at that brutal slaughter there. They were just surrounded. They didn't have a chance. Uh, but unfortunately, he did, we yeah we can't seem to take these off the walls and uh, bring them into the city because they're far too tall. Uh, we could bring them through one of here. Uh, but for whatever reason, we weren't able to. So I'm amassing my troops here for uh, an attack on the Citadel. It looks like my ally is getting a little eager. Uh, he's moving his, his units forward, which not necessarily a bad thing, but I would have saved these Bardi Shaxmen because they are very useful. Uh, but he's moving his now out-of-ammunition uh, Militia Crossbowmen. They've got some nice swords for Militia. And uh, he's just using up some of the ammo of these, uh, these Noble Archers on the wall, which is honestly not the worst plan. Uh, these troops here aren't going to be able to support my army too, too much. And I have the numbers to storm the Citadel. So if he wants to use his troops up to uh, waste the ammunition of those of those archers on the walls, then by all means, go for it. Uh, it looks like I'm moving up a unit of French archers to try and support the advance of this uh, of this ram to the walls. Hopefully we can get, it, get that gate open. Uh, I... Still got a very large intact army, so if we can push in, if we can get that gate down and just storm it, then maybe we have a chance, even with that catapult there. We might just have uh, the numbers to do to do this the old-fashioned way, the brutish, slogging, medieval combat sort of way, where we just push in, casualties be damned, and, uh, and uh, overwhelm the enemy. It's moving up quite, quite slowly. Um... We haven't exactly decided on a plan of attack yet, I don't think, because uh, I'm not in position to really push any advantage that we might have uh, to uh, to fight our way into the Citadel. Most of my troops are still in uh, kind of a defensive position. They've got checkpoints set up uh, to protect some of our high 
high value units. Uh, but unfortunately, we're not going to be able to get in there. I think it stopped at like 53% or something. Yep, so looks like our archers here are opening up. Trying to take some shots at uh, those Noble Highland archers on the wall. We're not going to be able to do a whole lot to them. Not up in that wall with all that indirect fire. It's just not going to happen. Not an effective use of our ammunition, unfortunately. And he is targeting this uh, this cat or this ram right here. He's trying to kill the crew. So I'm going to use my uh, my French archers to try and shield that unit if I can. Uh, shield them with their own bodies so that we don't lose the unit and don't lose the ram. Uh, because that would be disastrous for our armies. There's no way that we'd be able to get in. There's no way we would be able to win that battle unless this ram reaches those gates. So it is a high priority target. Everyone knows this. So he's just raining death down on this crew. Just slaughtering them. They're just just—they're taking fire from the towers. They're taking fire from two units of French archers. And they rout because they can't take it anymore. Uh, so what we're, we're going to do is uh, to try and salvage the situation now that this ram is all the way up on the hill. Thank God it doesn't roll backwards. Uh, that would have been disastrous. <laughs> we're going to roll right through our unit. Uh, so we're going to take this unit of French archers. We're going to use it on the ram. And we're actually going to be able to push it up the hill towards... Uh, towards the gate. Although it looks like my troops are getting a little bit scared here. He's going to try and run back in with his crossbows and they're just going to take a lot of fire from these fire arrows and they're just, they're not going to like it. So far their morale is holding uh, but in comes those fire arrows and that's just going to be the end for them. It's just too much for them to take uh, and me seeing the gravity of the situation decide that it's worth it to sacrifice this one unit of archers if I have to in order to get that ram to the wall because it needs to happen. We need to get uh, an opening into the Citadel if we're going to take it. Otherwise, we're doomed. Uh, and in the meantime, I think... No, I haven't quite started to uh, move my army up yet. Uh, but that's going to happen soon. We're just trying to keep them uh, well away from the wall so we don't have to lose many, many uh, of our valuable units. Because we're going to need every man if we're going to storm this keep. So it looks like we managed to get this to the wall. Uh, these units here are only able to shoot just indirectly at this unit now. Um, yep, just indirect fire, and they're, they're flame arrows, so they're taking quite a while. And I think these French archers have reasonable, they've got fairly reasonable armor, and it looks like these guys are still shoot. oh yeah, that's right, I brought up a unit of, uh, noble knights to try and draw some of the fire off of these, uh, off of my ram unit. So yeah, we do lose a few of them, but they were just running a screen, and, uh, in the meantime, my ally is moving his troops back in, so they're just gonna keep shooting at these junk units instead of at the high priority target which is exactly what we want them to do and it looks like the gates are almost down and boom there it is now we have our opening now we have just one thing to do and you guys are going to see what that is in just a moment so we are just amassing our french army here to see them staring down that citadel the bodies of their comrades littering the ground all the way up to those gates all of it shrouded in mist they know the scottish are up there and the Scottish are just waiting for the inevitable assault. There's archers up on those walls, very deadly, even for heavily armored troops on the ground. There are going to be a lot of French lives lost today, and everybody knows it. You can see a couple, yeah, all of our units here amassing on the rally point in the middle here. Got a few more units of noble knights coming in. Another three units, and uh this guy, General's Bodyguard, is just hanging out back here for now. I wasn't microing him very well. I kind of forgot about him. I was just trying to get all of my heavy infantry up in uh, up into this area so that we can make a, a serious push on the uh, on the Scottish position. So my plan of attack... Oh, pardon me. My plan of attack going into this is to um, use my heavier infantry, I believe, as a screen. No, use my archers as a screen to draw the fire so that I can push my... Uh, my pike units and my heavy infantry in here to occupy his uh, his heavy infantry for as long as I can. He's got two units of gallow glass here on the flanks just waiting to take on the heavily armored French noble knights. They are very effective against them, although they do themselves suffer from the, uh, the two-handed glitch. And in the middle here, he's got a very reliable unit of highland pikes. Very reliable, uh, hard to break, hard to push through quickly, uh, even though they are lightly armored. Your best chance is to use ranged units on them. And he's got his catapult in position here. And soon, soon, the horns are going to charge. But uh, my, I need to occupy all of these units, as many units as I can. 
And I'm going to use my cap to charge at this catapult unit, just like we did before. Uh, so we can occupy them. Potentially kill off all of them, or at least as many as we can. Uh, in order to let our heavy infantry do their job and push through the Scottish forces. The very outnumbered Scottish forces. It's only a matter of time here before the horns are sounded and all hell breaks loose. See the last few units of French knights coming in here. Got a few waiting in reserve. Just look at this. Just fire, dead bodies, destroyed buildings all around us. Very apocalyptic. Very end of days. And soon this French army is going to be charging up the hill out of the, at the Scottish, out of the mist, like an army of ghosts. Just a matter of time. And it looks like the horns have been sounded, and it is a general charge up to that Scottish position. We've got the archers here leading the way, trying to soak up some of the fire. The much faster Flemish pikemen pushing in, trying to uh, get it in ahead of the archer fire, and before they can take too many casualties, get up to that gate where, uh, where these Scottish archers can no longer hit them because they're far too close to the walls. And the Flemish, of course, are much more expendable uh, than our... Much more expendable than our uh, our French noble knights. Oh, brutal. Look at that. Look at that fire being poured into these guys. Taking a few casualties, not too many. Uh, just a few, just a handful. Probably about six or seven. And they're going to have a go at these Gallo Glass before they can get off any devastating charges and benefit from their huge charge bonus. So here they go. They're going in, denying them that charge. And the catapults aren't quite ready yet. He's biding his time, waiting for more of my troops to show up. And here they come. So I'm picking my battles pretty carefully here. Unfortunately, these guys drop their pikes, so they're not as useful against these Gallo Glass as they could have, could have been otherwise. He's sending in his last unit of Fuel Knights here. That's going to be difficult for these Flemish pikemen to fight off on their own. We've got a unit of French Noble Knights coming in to support them. Just hell being rained down on them from all sides. I think he's got a unit of... Uh, Noble Archers here. That's the one that was on the wall earlier that he managed to do a little bit of damage to. Yeah, he's got them in the back. He's got two units of Archers here. Very well prepared kill zone. Scottish player knows what he's doing. So here comes our ace in the hole. Our only chance is to get these guys in amongst these uh, these catapults before the catapults can fire. So it needs to happen. So we've got one of these units going forward here. I have hope at this point that we'll be able to silence this catapult. Uh, but he sees this and he's going to counter charge us with this late general's bodyguard unit. Very tough, very hard to kill, and here they come before the bulk of our French knights can engage his catapult. For the time being, they are occupied, uh, but who knows how long that's going to be. Uh, in the meantime, we've got our archers firing on them over the walls. We've got one unit of French archers here just getting hammered, but they're soaking up a lot of ammunition. Uh, they are in loose formation. It's hard to kill them. We've got a couple units here. Uh, he's using his militia crossbows to the best effect that he can, trying to kill some of these Scottish archers. Uh, it's just not working out for us. We've only managed to kill one of them so far. And seeing that my troops are in some trouble here, I'm going to send in the next wave, another unit of French archers, another unit of noble knights. Or, uh, yeah, dismounted noble knights. And unfortunately, our French knight unit here is just getting cut down. And there's still so many of these artillerymen left. There's more than enough to man the two catapults. So that plan of ours has unfortunately failed and that is going to leave our noble noble Frenchman open to some pretty brutal volleys from uh, from his artillery piece here. That is bad. Our plan has failed and now we are at his mercy. So what I'm trying to do is take what's left of that French knight unit, resume the assault, push them around these spears if I can. But uh, he sees what's going on so he's going to quickly move to block me. And unfortunately, there's not going to be anything I can do. I'm trying to going to try and skirt them into here, uh, but unfortunately, they get caught. And being outnumbered, they start to rout, and they are not going to make it out of here alive, unfortunately. So our the main the main thrust of our assault has failed, and now hell is going to start being rained upon our units here. Uh, you can see his catapult already starting to go to work. This is not good for our poor Frenchmen here. Uh, some of them are already starting to rout, as you can see. Uh, unit, a fairly healthy unit of 22. Well, not that healthy. They fought very well. So we've got some reserves up here, uh, right next to the walls. Not necessarily the best place for them, but I need them to be in position if I'm going to push forward. So we're going to try a different tack, and we're raining down arrows on this, uh, on this catapult unit, which is being reasonably effective, but it's just not enough. He's just doing so much damage to our troops here. 
and the morale cost of uh, having to fight while uh, being shot with arrows, being tired, being outnumbered, and with those flaming bolts coming in, it's just not good for our troops. Uh, so, oh, that was a brutal, brutal shot right there, and that's going to rout a couple units here. Uh, it's going to rout a unit of the Russians, which is going to spook some of our other units, and they're all going to start routing. So we're having a mass route here, our first mass route, and his Scottish troops are going to push forward, push their advantage, chase us all the way out the door, kill as many of us as they can, uh, while this unit of French knights here goes to work on uh, on these, uh, what do you call them, pikemen, these, uh, what is that? I'm sorry, it's very tired. Highlands Pikemen. <laughs> yeah, I'm very, very sleepy. And it looks like his noble units here have started to run out of ammunition. Uh, and they're gonna, they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna start surrounding our French knights here, who I don't think are gonna be able to hold the line much longer. These guys are, I'm not sure what these guys are doing. I think they're charging at our units right here. Yeah, just trying to push them forward, push them out. Uh, these guys are wavering, and we're trying to get them out of that gap. Uh, we're bringing up some more of our reserves here. We've still got a fair amount of troops, uh, but unfortunately, we are starting to run a little bit thin on the ground. So we've got one unit, two units in reserve, and a unit of, I believe, artillerymen, as well as our general's bodyguard. So most of our reserves have been committed, or they are at the walls. Uh, I'm doing my best to make them hug the walls so they are not going to take much damage from any troops that might be up here. Uh, he's still firing down, but he's getting low on ammunition. And these Scottish troops here, they get a little bit overzealous. This is another big mistake on the part of the Scottish player. He pushes out here, and I, I retreat my troops back, and I let him follow me out into, uh, into this courtyard here so that I can surround them and turn the tide and try and break as many of these Scottish troops as I possibly can. Uh, he's still got some significant reserves. He's got two units of Scottish pikes and a very depleted unit of Gallo Glass. Uh, but this is... This is like the the bulk of his army here. Um, these troops could be better spent fighting from a more advantageous position uh, than trying to fight the noble knights here, who are who are actually quite fresh. While many of these units are depleted or tired, uh, seeing that his troops are getting slaughtered, he's going to try and save that unit of uh, feudal knights. Unfortunately, it's a little too late for them, as many of them have already died. Well over half the unit has been demolished. Uh, he's still doing all right, though. He's got another unit of Highland Archers here, although I think they might be out of ammo. No, nope, they're not out of ammo just yet. He's still got his General's Bodyguard unit almost entirely intact. Uh, his General's right there. Hasn't taken a scratch yet. Uh, yeah, he's just... He's tightened his cordon here. It looks like he lost a unit of his Gallo Glass. Uh, he's losing most of the unit of this artillery. And I am determined not to fight inside this uh, this box of death again until I can deal with this artillery in one way or another. So seeing that this unit is actually being whittled down by the many, many archers that I still have on the field while he is out of ammunition with his archers, he's going to try and move them away. So I see that and I see an opportunity here. So we're gonna start pushing forward again with our troops. We've got a unit of uh, depleted noble knights here. But yeah, seeing an opportunity here, we're gonna start pouring some more troops into the gap and we're gonna use our second wave to try and push through what remains of these Scottish forces two very, very healthy units of uh, Scottish Pikes still remain between us and our enemy, that damned, damned catapult. So you can see our, our troops starting to run in here, uh, moving some more of our archers forward. Got another unit of, uh, of archers here. I don't think they've taken too, too much damage. We've still got fairly healthy archer companies, except for these poor guys, but they've seen a lot. This is the group that was pushing up the ram earlier that allowed us to even get inside the walls in the first place. And we've still got reserves. We've still got a full strength unit of pikemen and a full strength unit of noble knights that we are moving up here, as well as our general's bodyguard unit. So we still have a cav unit that we could use to push into these uh, into this catapult unit here and kill them. So there's still a chance, uh, but it could result in the sacrifice of our general. So the Scottish archers are pouring fire into this mass of troops here. Uh, listen, look like he's microing his catapult very well. He's missing an opportunity to just annihilate a mass of French knights as they pour forward through this gap. Yeah, so he is not uh, he's not microing his troops as well as he could be here, and he is missing the opportunity to uh, put some devastating fire into our French troops here. And I see how blobbed up they are, so I'm going to try and retreat some of my troops because I know I know what's coming. The hellstorm is going to start once again. You can see these catapults here, probably going to start, yep, there they are, they're targeting, they've been activated, so they're going to start winding up for an assault. And we're not in a good position. Uh, our noble knights here have only engaged these two units, 
Uh, and these guys are capable of holding us for long enough for that catapult to do some serious, serious damage. Ooh. Ooh, that was close. That was very close. Uh, so I see this, and I want to try and engage as many of his units as I can. Maybe make him uh, shoot some of his own units in the meantime. Wear down his troops. I still have more soldiers. I still have the numeri numerical advantage. Uh, but we're getting down to it here. This is like the final assault. The Scottish are doing their best to hold the line. Holding as best they can against these relentless French knights. But most of these troops here have lost their lost their pikes and they're getting shot. Yeah, there's some there's some friendly fire going on here. Just wiped out a few ranks of those pikemen. Uh, I killed some of my noble knights as well. But uh, he needs the troops more than I do. Oh, brutal. So he's not having a whole lot of luck firing from that distance. So he's going to move point blank. Point blank and fire into the side of this French... Into the uh, flank of this French troop here. Those noble knights. Many of them are going to burn, unfortunately. Uh, but we are making some progress here. Uh, that Gallo Glass unit has been wiped out. They're down to six men. This unit of pikemen is losing very decisively against these French knights. Taking missile fire in the back, some friendly fire from their own Highland archers, while these French knights in the front are just doing work, just cutting them down wherever they can. And I have a bit of a micro mistake on my on my part here. These French knights aren't really doing anything while we're trying to sneak in some uh, troops on into uh, onto the wall here, trying to use our archers to fire down into that catapult, but it's not working. Uh, I did manage to scoot a unit of French knights into here. Uh, and silence these archers for the time being, which is a great thing for me. But I'm going to pull them back here because we need the numbers. And I want to uh, destroy his center here. Because I can destroy his center. He doesn't have the troops to stop me from getting to this artillery. And if I can get to that artillery... Oh, brutal. Yeah, this unit is just going to get destroyed. But if I can get to that artillery, I can stop this bombardment. Oh, it's brutal. Oh, it's horrible. Horrible. But yeah, this artillery needs to die. And I know that it needs to die. So I'm going to rush in my cavalry and we're going to use the same tactic because he doesn't have the pikes to stop me anymore. He doesn't have the reserves. He's still got his general's bodyguard unit and he is moving it into position because he knows what I'm going to do. Uh, and seeing that, I'm going to try and scoot around here on this other side and, uh, and go for the next best target, which is these noble archers here who still have probably about half ammunition. So I'm going to take them and I'm going to run them at this unit. He doesn't see it until it's too late. Until there's a charge here going. Oh, it looks like I'm going to go for his general's bodyguard first. Uh, it's a bit of a ballsy move on my part. Uh, but I think it's worth it. His bodyguard is not as numerically superior as mine. But unfortunately, we're going to get some fire poured into their flanks by this archer unit here. So seeing this, I know I need a, I need a breakthrough. I know this is it's now or never. So I'm going to take my units, run them right through these Scottish pikes, overrun their positions... And, uh, yeah, just kill as many of them as we can. So his center is collapsing. Oh, and my general goes down. This could have been the end. If this got off another volley into my now generalless uh, French uh, blob here, that could have been it. It could have been a mass route, and they might not have come back. And then I would have been down to just two units and an artillery piece in here. So that could have been the end right there. Could have been total destruction of our army with the loss of our general. Uh, and unfortunately, our French bodyguard unit is getting cut down. They are now outnumbered, but we are pouring in some troops to try and defend them. So it's not going to be... At this point, the uh, the days of the Scottish are numbered. Uh, these guys have all dropped their pikes. They're fighting our French knights hand-to-hand. -hand. Uh, he's trying to break our morale using fire arrows. But unfortunately, he pulls his general's bodyguard out, and I'm going to use that opportunity to smash into these knights. And watch this. Boom! Oh, that poor bastard from close range. Uh, but now we've got our general's bodyguard in there amongst them, and these guys don't have a chance in hell. And uh, we've got an, another unit, a fairly healthy unit of 55 French knights coming up here to support that cavalry charge. It's just the end for the Scottish. After we broke through that front line, there was nothing that he could do to stop us. So what we're doing now is bringing in our final reserves, our fully, fully, um, fully staffed unit of, uh, Flemish, Flemish pikes. Wow, it's really hard to, like, translate the French names into English, uh, while I'm talking, while I'm speaking English, and we're using up our last of our reserves, we're using, or throwing in our French knights into the mix, and he just doesn't have any troops left to stop us. Uh, he does have this unit of noble archers who are hiding on the wall, 
previously. Um, I thought they were originally a unit of fuel knights that I didn't see. Uh, so I kind of panicked a little bit. So we're going <laughs> to rush a lot of more troops of these guys than what we really need to. Um, but yeah, we're just closing. We're tightening the noose here on the on these Scottish troops. And it's only a matter of time. We've got control of the town square. We've got the numbers. We've got fresh reserves coming in. It is the end for the Scottish player. Uh, looks like he does still have some ammunition. So he's going to try and fire into the backs of our troops. But it's too little too late. He just he doesn't have the soldiers to beat me at this point. Uh, so somehow, by some miracle, I managed to fight my way in here. Uh, lost almost all of my army. Almost all of them. We're down, yeah, 85% of our two respective armies has been killed. Uh, but we managed to fight our way through here with no siege weapons and, uh, and take this square from a heavily entrenched Scottish army. And yeah, they're just being surrounded at this point. His general is in the middle of his men, inspiring them to fight on bravely, even in the face of overwhelming odds. If he can break my uh, morale here, which is what he's trying to do. Oh, excuse me. He's trying to bring in these units here to attack uh, my my uh, archers and my knights from behind and break their morale. But I managed to get my f uh, Flemish pikemen in here to, uh, to block their charge, stop them from uh, causing a mass rout. Because things could still potentially go very poorly for me if he manages to rout my troops. And then I start bringing in uh, the rest of my noble knights here. And this unit just doesn't have a chance in hell. Uh, they're just being set on, set on on two, three different sides by noble knights and Flemish pikemen. They are just, they just don't have a chance anymore. Even our French archers, they've run out of ammunition and they're in there doing work. Taking on this general's bodyguard. Four of them all at once just trying to cut down these these uh, Scottish nobles. There goes one of them. His general is making one glorious charge into the mass of our ranks here. He's trying to get behind his troops, keep his general alive, and here he goes. Bam, just into these into these noble knights, into this fresh unit of noble knights that we brought up. They're going to take them on. His, uh, his general is still... Oh, wow, he's just cutting our troops down. And that is the end there. We, the uh, Scottish general does not die. He simply runs out of time because we overrun the square. So good game to NPS Spartan. He did a great job pulling off Antique Miner and myself. Uh, I deployed 2,251 troops and I lost quite a lot of them. I had 821 remaining. Uh, my ally on the other hand deployed 2,041, had 419 remaining. And the Scottish forces fought nearly to the last man with 21 men remaining out of 2,200. And 40, I believe, that were deployed. Uh, let's take a look here. Uh, one of our noble knights did quite a lot of damage. 212, uh, 134. Yes, our noble knights did a great job in fighting these Scottish troops. And they suffered quite a lot of casualties for it. So that's the end of this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, we're going to be coming out with some King Arthur next. And then that is going to be the last video for a little while. Because unfortunately, I have to go to uh, Vancouver for five days for my work. And I will be back on the weekend with more uploads. And that's how it's going to be for the next few weeks. Probably the next three weeks, three and a half weeks. Uh, so most of the uploads are going to be coming on the weekend. So it gives you something to look forward to when you're done work. And you can just come home and sit down and enjoy yourself. So that was a really long battle. I hope you guys enjoyed. And I will see you later. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.